Uh, today we shall discuss a topic hardly uh, crystal oscillators from analog and pulse circuits. So crystal oscillators are basically used to provide stable frequency of oscillations. In the earlier classes we have seen hardly uh, LC oscillators and RC oscillators. Compared to those, crystal oscillators will provide better stability of oscillations. So crystal, what is a crystal? It is a thin slice of piezoelectric material. And piezoelectric material has got uh, a specific property that, which is called as piezoelectric effect. That is, the crystal will react to any mechanical stress by producing an electric charge. Okay. So that is, if any, if you are applying some mechanical stress across a piezoelectric material, then it produces some electric charge. This is called as piezoelectric effect. Okay. So in the reverse effect, an electric field applied to the crystal results in mechanical strain. That is, if you apply some electric field up to the crystal, then it again results in mechanical strain. Both piezoelectric effect as well as its reverse uh, can be seen with piezoelectric materials. Then, if you look at a piezoelectric, uh, that is piezoelectric effect and inverse piezoelectric effect are explained in this figure, where in piezoelectric effect, this is a crystal, okay. Uh, so this, you are applying mechanical stress on uh, across this crystal, then you see that electric field is produced, that is electric charge is produced. On the other hand, when you are applying some electric field across a crystal, then this crystal undergoes a mechanical strain. Okay. So there are three types of materials that satisfy piezoelectric effect. Okay. Virtually are tourmaline and quartz. Coming to Rochelle salt, it exhibits very good piezoelectric effect. That is, even for small vibrations at the input side, it is capable of producing electric field at the output. That is, it exhibits very good piezoelectric effect. So, there, but the thing is, these are mechanically weak. So, these are used in microphone speakers, etc. These are the places where Rochelle salt can be used as a crystal. Coming to tourmaline, tourmaline exhibits poor piezoelectric effect compared to the um, Rochelle salt. Okay, this exhibits very poor piezoelectric effect, but these are strongest under mechanical stress. And basically, these are used in high frequency applications. This is how thermal look like, looks like. Next, quartz. Quartz is a is a compromise between Rochelle salt and tourmaline. Rochelle salt, we have seen it has it has, it exhibits very good piezoelectric effect, but they are mechanically weak. Coming to tourmaline, it exhibits poor uh, piezoelectric effect. But they are mechanically strong. Compared to quartz, it is a compromise between low chili and terminal. That is, it exhibits good piezoelectric effect. Okay. And it is widely available in nature. So, for this reason, quartz is preferred in crystal oscillators. So, we will be using quartz in crystal oscillators. So, if you look into the electric equivalent circuit of uh, crystal, then you can see here crystal, uh, it is crystal slab. Okay, and you have uh, two holding plates on either sides, and it is indicated as plus and minus uh, polarities. Okay, so its equivalent circuit is a resistor, inductor, and capacitor in series RLC1, and another capacitor C2 connected across this series combination, connected in parallel to this series combination. Okay, so the overall impedance of this crystal is given by. If you take only reactive components, because frequency of oscillations depends only on the reactive components. So, Z overall impedance Z is equal to, here you see that L and C1 are in series. So, it is reactance of L is given by J omega L plus that of capacitance is given by 1 by J omega C1. So, J omega L plus 1 by J omega C1, this is in parallel with C2. C2 is 1 by J omega C2. The disimpedance corresponding to C2 is given by 1 by J omega C2. So it is J omega L plus 1 by J omega C1. This thing is in parallel with 1 by J omega C2. If we try to simplify it further, so J omega L plus 1 by J omega C1. Parallel combination usually if Z1 is parallel with Z2, you will write it as Z1, Z2 by Z1 plus Z2. So Z1, that is J omega L plus 1 by J omega C into Z2 that is into 1 by J omega C2 by Z1 plus Z2. So it is simply writing Z1 
z1 parallel with z2 is written as z1 z2 by z1 plus z2 okay so on further simplification here you can see uh, you'll get l by c2 minus 1 by omega square c1 c2 that is just multiply j omega l into 1 by j omega c2 j omega j omega cancel you'll have l by c2 okay plus j square is minus 1 so you'll have minus 1 by omega square c1 c2 okay this is numerator coming to denominator i'm just taking j omega common in all the terms so you get j omega into l plus uh, if i take j common i need to multiply and divide by j okay so you'll get minus 1 by omega square c1 minus 1 by omega square c2 so on the whole it is l so if you uh, take lcm of the terms in numerator then you get l omega square c1 minus 1 by j omega into l omega square c1 c2 minus c2 minus c1 i've just simplified it further okay so now you can see it is l omega square c1 minus 1 by take c2 also outside of these terms then you'll get j omega c2 into l omega square c1 minus 1 minus c1 by c2 so now taking l c1 common in the numerator l c1 into omega square minus 1 by l c1 by j omega l c1 c2 into omega square minus 1 by l c1 minus 1 by l c2 so on the whole z can be written as z equal to lc1 lc1 getting cancelled you're left over with omega square minus 1 by lc1 by j omega c2 into omega square minus 1 by lc1 minus 1 by lc2 so this is the overall inference of a crystal now you have different cases suppose if this crystal is connected in series to the amplifier then inference of the crystal will be low that is numerator should will become zero in other words okay so if crystal is connected in series to the amplifier then impedance of the crystal will be low so low impedance means uh, approximately we can equate this numerator of z to zero so if you equate this numerator to zero you will get omega square minus 1 by lc1 equal to zero or omega square equal to 1 by lc1 so omega equal to 1 by root over lc1 now we have omega equal to 2 pi f so replacing this omega by 2 pi f you'll have f equal 2 pi f equal to 1 by root over lc1 or f is equal to 1 by 2 pi root over lc1 so the frequency is called as series frequency because you are connecting this uh, crystal in series to the amplifier so this frequency of oscillations is called as series frequency fs is equal to 1 by 2 pi root over lc1 okay how did we obtain this simply by equating the numerator of the impedance to zero why because you are assuming the uh, crystal to be connected in series with the amplifier so when you connect the crystal in series to the amplifier then impedance of the crystal will be low or almost zero so equating that numerator of the impedance to zero you are getting the frequency of oscillations as fs is equal to 1 by 2 pi root over lc1 okay the next we shall see if the crystal is connected in parallel to the amplifier then impedance of the crystal will be quite high impedance of the crystal will be quite high when assuming it to be infinite it is possible when denominator of the uh, impedance is zero because something divided by zero gives you a large value uh, theoretically infinite so now equating the denominator of the impedance to zero what is the denominator of impedance j omega c2 into omega square minus 1 by lc1 minus 1 by lc2 equal to 0 so omega square yeah equal to 0 or in other words i can say omega square minus 1 by lc1 minus 1 by lc2 equal to 0 because omega c2 cannot be 0 so uh, or taking our terms on the other side you'll get omega square equal to 1 by lc1 plus 1 by lc2 so if I let 1 by C equivalent equal to 1 by C1 plus 1 by C2, then you have omega square equal to, what do you write from this? Omega square equal to 1 by L into 1 by C1 plus 1 by C2. 
So if I take 1 by C1 plus 1 by C2 equal to 1 by C equivalent, so I get omega square equal to 1 by L into C equivalent. Now omega equal to 1 by root over L into C equivalent. Again replacing omega equal to 2 pi f, omega equal to 2 pi f, we can write f equal to 1 by 2 pi root over L into C equivalent where C equivalent is nothing but C1, C2 by C1 plus C2. Okay. So this frequency is called as parallel frequency Fp because you are connecting the crystal in parallel to the amplifier. So you have seen two frequencies, series frequency and parallel frequency. Okay. Now the overall impedance of the crystal can be written as omega square. Now just trying to substitute these values of uh, omega s and omega p uh, in the impedance, you can write z equal to omega square minus omega s square by j omega c2 into omega square minus omega p square. Why is it so? See the impedance equation you have seen, it is z equal to omega square minus 1 by, see 1 by l c1 is nothing but omega s square. So it is omega square minus omega s square by j omega c2 into omega square minus omega p square. So omega p square. So this is what overall impedance z of the crystal. Now relation between impedance and frequency. Okay. So z is equal to f square just replacing omega by f. Okay. Z is equal to f square. Omega equal to 2 pi f if you replace. Okay. Uh, f square, I will just try to do it here. So, z is equal to omega is 2 pi f square. Okay, omega square 2 pi f whole square minus omega s is 2 pi f s whole square by j omega is 2 pi f c2 into 2 pi f whole square minus 2 pi f p whole square. Okay. So on further simplification what do you get? 4 pi square f square. So here you will have 4 pi square common and it is f square minus f s square divided by j 2 pi f c 2 here also you will have 4 pi square, 4 pi square is common, so you will get 4 pi square into f square minus f p square. Okay. So now this 4 p square and 4 p square getting cancelled. Finally, you are left over z is equal to f square minus f s square by j2 pi f c2 into f square minus f p square. This is how impedance is related to frequency of a crystal. Okay, so next we will see frequency stability of an oscillator. The frequency stability of an oscillator is a measure of its ability to maintain required frequency as long as possible over a period of time. That is, frequency stability is nothing but ability of an oscillator to maintain constant frequency over a long period of time. That is what we want oscillator means, it should maintain uh, oscillations with constant frequency. So the main drawback of transistor oscillators is frequency of oscillators is not stable for long time. Okay. So transistor oscillators are not that stable for long time. So what are the main uh, reasons? So due to change in temperature, the values of frequency determining components of R, L and C will change. Yeah. We shall see a couple of reasons why uh, transistor oscillators are not stable or not having frequency stability for over long period of time. First thing is, see the values of R, L and C change with temperature, okay. So what definitely the frequency also will change because these are the elements that are going to determine the frequency of oscillations. The next thing is due to variations in supply. So even due to the variations in supply, you might have a change in frequency. And the last one is due to aging of components. Aging of components is, uh, that is, it has been more number of days, after more number of days or years after manufacturing the components. So what that is called is due to aging of components. So for these reasons, we may have, we may not have uh, good stability, frequency stability. 
and in absence of automatic temperature control the effect of temperature on lc circuit can be reduced by selecting l with positive temperature coefficient and c with negative temperature coefficient so if we do not have a facility of uh, automatic temperature control then effect of temperature on lc circuits can be reduced by selecting l with positive temperature coefficient that is inductor with positive temperature coefficient and capacitor c with negative temperature coefficient so on the whole this change effect of change in temperature might be reduced to some extent by choosing l with positive temperature coefficient and c with negative temperature coefficient okay so like the lowling effect can be minimized by using high impedance and low output impedance high input impedance and low output impedance moreover the loading effect on the oscillators can also be minimized always by choosing high input impedance and low output impedance okay then frequency stability there is a term called frequency stability you denote it by s omega and s omega is equal to d theta by d omega right what is this d theta d theta is nothing but phase shift and d omega is change in frequency so frequency stability is given defined by d theta by d omega that is ratio of d theta to d omega where d theta is phase shift and d omega is change in frequency so as you see frequency stability is denoted by s omega so the circuit is more stable if s omega value is high obviously if d omega change in frequency is low then only we say that stability of frequency stability is good so d omega is less in other words s omega should be high so if you want to have good frequency stability then the value of s omega should be high okay so this is about frequency stability of an oscillator next we'll see amplitude stability of an oscillator the oscillators don't require positive feedback for their operation okay the positive resistance of lc tank circuit is cancelled by introducing right amount of negative resistance across tank circuit then steady state oscillations can be obtained so in lc tank circuits okay the positive resistance whatever is uh, found in lc tank circuit it can be cancelled by in including or introducing right amount of negative resistance across the tank circuit so uh, with this we can have steady state oscillations now in case of rc oscillators the amplitude variations are due to power supply fluctuations and aging of transistors or other components okay in case of lc oscillators the change in amplitude may be because of the positive resistance developed across the lc tank circuit so to overcome that amplitude variations due to positive resistance of lc tank circuit we will connect a right amount of negative resistance across the tank circuit that is how we can overcome amplitude variations in lc oscillator coming to rc oscillator if you want to reduce the amplitude variations then uh, or, or what is the reason for getting amplitude variations in uh, rc oscillators it is mainly due to the power supply fluctuations as well as aging of transistors or other components so stability now amplitude can be maintained by replacing the resistors in the bridge with sensors coming to uh, wind bridge oscillator we have seen in such case if you want to have stability in amplitude then you can replace those resistors with sensors so in wind bridge oscillator you can replace the resistors with sensors in order to have uh, oscillations of constant amplitude okay so we shall quickly revise all the things Uh, what we have discussed so far, crystal, yeah, crystal exhibits a property called piezoelectric effect. That is, when you apply some stress, it produces electric charge. In the reverse, when electric voltage is applied across a crystal, it will undergo some mechanical strain. And we have seen uh, three different types of crystals. What are those? Uh, Rochelle salt, tourmaline, and quartz. Rochelle salt is uh, exhibits good piezoelectric effect, but it is uh, mechanically weak. Coming to tourmaline, it exhibits poor electric, poor piezoelectric effect, uh, but it it is mechanically strong. Coming to quartz, it is a compromise between these two. Okay. Uh, so, and moreover, quartz is widely available in nature. That is why we prefer quartz in crystal oscillators. Okay, uh, next we have seen the electrically equivalent circuit of a crystal, and we have calculated the overall impedance, simplified it further, and we have got an expression. Then 
we have defined series frequency and parallel frequency. Okay, series frequency that is when you are connecting crystal in series to the amplifier. So, impedance will be low that is we have equated this numerator part to zero. So, you have got uh, series frequency omegas. In order to, and what was series frequency omegas? Omegas is equal to 1 by 2 pi root over L into C1. Coming to parallel frequency omega p, it is obtained when you are connecting the crystal in parallel to the amplifier. So, when you are connecting uh, crystal in parallel to the amplifier, the impedance will be very high. Impedance will be very high in the sense you are assuming this denominator part to be 0. Only then something, uh, any number divided by 0 is going to give a very large value theoretically infinite. So, now equating this denominator value to 0, we have seen that omega p square is equal to 1 by L c 1 plus L 1 by L c 2 or on further simplification, assuming that 1 by c 1, letting 1 by c 1 plus 1 by c 2 equal to 1 by c equivalent, we have seen omega p is equal, f p is equal to 1 by 2 pi root over L into C equivalent. Yeah, we have seen f s 1 by 2 pi root over L into C 1 and f p 1 by 2 pi root over L into C equivalent where 1 by C equivalent equal to 1 by C 1 plus 1 by C 2. That is how we have calculated f s and f p. After finding f s and f p, we have resubstituted these values in the impedance equation. Then you could derive frequency uh, relation between impedance and frequency. So, z is equal to f square minus f s square by j2 pi f c2 into f square minus f p square. Then coming to frequency stability, we have seen how to, what are the main reasons to have amplitude or to have frequency change. That is if uh, change in the values of r, l and c and due to variations in power supply and also due to aging of components. Okay. So, in tank circuits, you can uh, uh, if that is if the stability is not achieved because of temperature variations then uh, we can have L with positive temperature coefficient and C with negative temperature coefficient so that it could be cancelled and give constant frequency oscillations. And moreover loading effect can be reduced by using high input impedance and low output impedance. And finally frequency stability S omega is given by d theta by d omega. Okay. And S omega, well, high value of S omega indicates that stability of, uh, frequency stability of oscillations is good. Right. And uh, amplitude stability, we have seen uh, different cases. If it is LC tank circuits, suppose some positive resistance is developed across an LC tank circuit, then we have uh, nullified it or we have cancelled it by connecting right amount of negative resistance across the tank circuit again. Okay. And in case of RC oscillators, the amplitude variations are mainly due to the power supply fluctuations and aging of transistors or other components. So, by choosing proper uh, components and uh, maintaining constant supply, we can have uh, fixed amplitude oscillations using RC oscillators. And coming to bridge, rain bridge oscillator, if you could replace those resistors with sensors, we can have uh, good amplitude stability in case of rain bridge oscillator. Okay, so compared to all other oscillators, uh, crystal oscillator will have good stability. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.